I'm struck by a conversation I had uh, just before walking in with Leslie Florio and Steve Murray, and it's about a professor of mine um, from college uh, who I've invited to come and, and address us at inauguration. And um, it got me thinking as I was talking with a bunch of you in the Great Hall about what it feels like to have it be your first day and to have it be your first day back. Um, and so, I, you know, what I heard from all of you was, we're so excited to be back, we're so excited to have the students. Talked to a bunch of the students this morning who said, we're so excited to be back. And um, it got me thinking, my, my first day of college was September of 1984. Um, and I felt on that first day what I know many of our first time students are feeling. And it was simply this, um, incredible excitement and equally incredible fear. Uh, and you know, I think as, as teachers, as educators, um, the more we move away uh, from that experience so many of us had uh, on our own first day of college, we may, remember, um, we may remember the excitement. I think sometimes we let go of the fear. And in fact, it was only when I was talking to them that it put me back in that space of, man, those were scary days, those first days. And uh, the professor that will be addressing us in a couple weeks is um, one of the people who made me feel like I belonged at that college. Um, at a time when I wasn't at all sure I did, um, and who gave me uh, a sense of community. So as we open up today, I would encourage you to remember what it felt like on your first day of college and um, what I see you do every day, which is make our students, especially the ones who are a little bit nervous, a little bit unsure, feel like they belong here. So, so thank you so much. Um, we have a very full morning ahead of us today. Uh, I wanted to take about 20 minutes uh, to offer some thoughts as we begin this uh, fall. Uh, to get the morning kicked off, what I'd like to do is start by watching uh, this incredible action-packed video uh, that Norm and others have made, highlighting uh, many of you. Uh, before we begin, um, one of our faculty members emailed me yesterday, uh, Maria Mansella. I'm sure many of you know her. Um, you know that uh, she's going to appear in the video, talk about the student trip she led to Italy just this past summer. Um, Maria emailed me uh, and just said, uh, can we please do something? Uh, for, for the Italians that have been so impacted uh, by that earthquake. Uh, and we want to right now extend our sympathy and our thoughts to the people of Italy who have been impacted by that earthquake. And Maria, um, we look forward to identifying with you a way for the college to express our solidarity with the Italians. And, and I thank you so much for working with us to do so. Um, I will tell you yesterday in the dry run I did, uh, Rick and others said, you know, when you get to the video, you just start, and they listed four or five things I was supposed to do. So those of you who know me um, can imagine what my response to that was. Um, Javier Pina, the Vice President for Student Government at the Knight Campus, is going to do that for us. <laughs> Buongiorno. <laughs> Um, this year we ran a summer program in Italy, as we've been uh, running for the last uh, 14 years. It's a lifelong learning experience. Our students are transformed. There are many benefits uh, to this program. Not just that they learn more the Italian language in the traditional classroom setting, but uh, it's learning uh, outside the classroom as we visit historical sites, as we go to meet local people, we had a group of about 10 students. We had uh, students from 19 years old to a gentleman who turned 8 years old on the 29th of um, June. In fact, we celebrated his birthday in Italy. Students just grow emotionally, spiritually, um, and of course, educationally. In June, I received a Teaching Excellence Award from the Accreditation Council of Business Schools and Programs. This is an agency that accredits business education in colleges and universities all over the world. I attended a variety of workshops that focused on active learning techniques and the use of technology and social media in the classroom. I chose these seminars because I felt that they would enhance my learning and it would help me to understand 
how students learn and to help them to take um, a more active role in their learning. I've been working for over a year on a film short, an experimental short titled Reenactments. This was screened at the Newark Museum in the latter part of April of this year. This was uh, augmented by a student who shared her story of survival through the Sandy Hook Massacre. In early June, I flew to Los Angeles to be a panel member an experimental film at the New Media Film Festival, where a short documentary that I made in 2015 titled Moth Vitals was an official selection. I participated in numerous new media sessions, including Machinima. On June 11th, um, I traveled to New York for a screening of my film that was nominated for Best Experimental at the America's Film Festival. It was a very exciting experience for me in which I was able to share my experience as a filmmaker with very well-known filmmakers and emerging filmmakers from Central and South America. This month, I learned that my short film, Moth Vitals, has been selected for screening at the Aesthetica Short Film Festival in York, England in November. The sessions and master classes are going to inform my teaching practice here at CCRI in my video art class and in my other digital media courses. This past June, I've been really fortunate to attend the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners National Conference. I did do a poster presentation on cardiorenal syndrome clinical pearls for patient survival. It talked about the treatments that we give to patients who have cardiac illnesses and how they affect the kidneys and vice versa. When you're one poster among perhaps 50, you really need to not only be able to know your content and present it to other professionals, but actually be able to say something to draw them in so they really want to listen. And those are the things when I come back here to teach this fall, I will bring with me. Well, the CCRI mobile recruit team uh, was something that the admissions team wanted to come up with for this summer. An opportunity to start testing different ways for us to go out into the community and make a connection with everyone in the community. We thought the, the whole idea of Kennedy Plaza would be a really good idea. The hub of Providence, the hub of the capital city. We've really tested a number of different formats. Uh, Providence Place Mall, Warwick Mall, gone to a few festivals. Many of the folks that we've met out here didn't feel comfortable going to a campus location. By us being in a whole different environment, it created uh, opportunity to speak about what they want to do with their lives and how we could be part of adding value to their lives uh, with an education. I'm running a hospital-based oncology program, which is a collaborative effort between Roger Williams Medical Center and Community College of Rhode Island. What we are doing is having interns come in and work with patients. And what we found is that massage therapy was able to reduce symptoms of chemotherapy and radiation. The medical profession looked at the information and found that we had some significant changes with distress, pain, and also with chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy. The resident that I've been working with, Alvaro Mendez, and myself, we will be going to the International Oncology Symposium to present our findings. Because of my work on this project, I have been recognized nationally by the American Massage Therapy Association as Teacher of the Year for 2016. So every year in June, for the last eight years, Hello Broadway has been in production here at CCRI. It's been very exciting because our theater students get a tremendous amount of experience with their voice. They bring a lot of their theatrical performing experience, but our music students get another side of the uh, performance spectrum by learning Broadway repertoire. We try to incorporate musicals from the standard repertoire all the way into the new millennium, and that's pretty exciting because they may be doing tap dancing, they may be doing uh, jazz, they may be doing modern stage movement. It's a little bit of everything jammed into one show. And this brings a whole dimension to our students that they don't otherwise get. This is a big addition to our curriculum here at CCRI. The NYSAD Excellence Award is from the National Institute for Staff and Organizational Development for Excellence in Teaching, 
There were four recipients of this award from the Community College of Rhode Island. Lee Martin, a professor in English. Melissa Sullivan, dental hygiene and health. Martha Vignot, a rehabilitative health and physical therapy. There were myself, the engineering and technology department. We were nominated by our department chairs. The whole event was for community college teachers from all over the country. Three of us went to Austin, Texas in the end of May uh, for this large conference. There were vendors there, there were workshops. Uh, one was about new electronics in the classroom. I learned about some good best practices that other teachers were using. It really confirmed some of the things that we were already doing here. This summer, five of us from CCRI went to the Digital Literacy Institute at the Harrington School of URI. The five of us from CCRI were Dr. Joseph Amante E. Zapata from the Music Department, Jennifer Harrell from Rehabilitative Services, Chuck Morgan, Associate Professor within the English Department, Jim Barrett, CCRI Librarian, and myself, Lydia Rogers, also from the English Department and Adjunct Professor in Communications. So we learned the different theories of how people use the internet to gain their information, especially young adults. We also had hands-on experiences where we learned different software and different techniques. Personally, I loved a system called Padlet, which is an interactive bulletin board that allows students to put up video, pictures, sound, text, and really get a sense to be talking with one another in an informal setting. I'm going to try to incorporate that in my class. I think it shows a lot of promise. So one of the things I want to use is Flipgrid. Maybe ask them some basic questions, how they, if they've learned uh, anything about new music styles, uh, have their feelings changed about anything we talk about there. Something that humanizes it and allows them to interact a bit more. We were librarians, media professionals, educators, and we all brought something to the table and we all gained a lot as we left. The week was an awesome experience. It is our great privilege to announce that this August at the 2016 Motif Theater Awards, the CCRI players were awarded four statues for our productions. They are Best Production, The Rocky Horror Show. Best Scenic Design, The Rocky Horror Show. Best Male Performance, American Buffalo. And Fan Favorite for American Buffalo. And scene. Woo! So I've, I've seen that video several times. Um, this is the first time I'm seeing it in this room uh, with all of you. And I see so many of your faces uh, that were on the video uh, here today. And I guess I'm struck by uh, three things. Uh, the first is just the satisfaction and the pleasure uh, that I hear from all of you in this work that you're doing. Just isn't that a big part of why we do it, the joy we get ourselves um, doing this work. The second is the way you are advancing your fields by committing to this learning and this scholarship. And then the third, of course, is the way this will help us serve and teach our students um, better every year. So thank you all for, all for contributing uh, to the video and thanks to Norm and the team uh, for pulling it together. I'd now like to introduce our administrative team. Uh, first, Vice President for Business Affairs, Dave Patton. <laughs> Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs, Rosemary Costigan. <laughs> Associate Vice President for Student Services, Ron Schertz. Associate Vice President, Center for Workforce and Community Education, Robin Smith. A new arrival, Associate Vice President for Institutional Advancement and College Relations, Isabel Diarujo Rivera. Dean Peter Woodbury. Dean Ruth Sullivan. Interim Dean of Arts and Sciences, John Cole. Interim Assistant Dean of Nursing, Hilary Jansen. Chief of Staff, Alix Ogden. 
Another new arrival, Director of Institutional Equity, Alfonso Atkins, Jr. Uh, and finally, and essentially, the assistant to the president, Deb Zielinski. You will have noticed that uh, one in our midst is missing, Vice President of Student Affairs and Chief Outcomes Officer, Sarah Enright. Uh, I spoke with Sarah yesterday. Uh, for the healthcare professionals in the room, uh, you will know what I'm describing. Sarah was diagnosed with pneumonia. Uh, and has begun a round of antibiotics. So we are keeping a close eye on her. She is really disappointed to miss the first opening day. Uh, I walked into school this morning with Ron Schertz, who, as we all know he would, has said uh, he will keep this ship sailing very smoothly, and I thank you for that, Ron. So, I am so pleased uh, to have with us today our chairman of the post-secondary council, Bill Folks. Uh, so many of you have met Bill since assuming the chair uh, a year ago. Bill has worked, uh, I can say this from watching, tirelessly to serve all three higher education institutions. I will tell you he is truly a friend to this college. Uh, please join me in welcoming Bill Folks. Thanks for inviting me and having me. It's uh, an honor to be here. Um, I had the privilege of, uh, as the chair of the governing body of the higher education institutions in Rhode Island, I had the privilege of chairing also the search for our new president um, this past fall and winter. Um, and it was great to get to know so many of you, and there are so many familiar faces out there. Um, it was also a terrific experience to, to better understand your passionate commitment to the institution uh, in terms and relative to the other institutions. It's, it's a younger institution. It's scrappier. It's hungrier, as Hamilton would say in the, the musical. Uh, uh, but it's, uh, it's one that is very passionately committed to the success of its students, and I was quite impressed. Um, as some of you might also know, I am also on the faculty of the Rhode Island School of Design. Um, so like you, I'm just beginning my school year. We have our convocation right after Labor Day. We're a little bit lazier. Um, and um, it's, a, it's actually, it's sort of a, a mid-career thing for me. I've been teaching for about nine years, and if I teach for another 25, I'll be, I'll be very, very happy. It's actually been a great joy. Um, I sometimes, when I start my classes in the fall, and I say sometimes, you'll understand why I say that, but I sometimes start with the story about Airbnb. Um, you, some of you might know Airbnb. It's the, the marketplace for renting uh, vacation homes, and I'm not suggesting you go on vacation quite yet or rent your place and get more income. Uh, but Airbnb, as you also might know, was founded by two RISD graduates. So RISD really likes Airbnb. Uh, it's a very successful company started by two graduates of the class of 2004. Um, when I first started teaching at RISD, my very first month, two students came into my office and um, they said, hey, um, a couple of friends of ours had this idea, they graduated a couple of years ago, and it's this idea for like renting your apartment out to friends of yours. Um, and they call it Airbnb because, you know, like the air mattress that you sleep on when you sleep at someone's place, um, they're gonna, you know, rent out the place and maybe even have breakfast for people. And so I paused and I said, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard of. <laughs> And so now you understand why I only tell that story sometimes. My kids are horrified to know that I tell that story. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it highlights perhaps how generally stupid I am, but my lesson from that story is always how very specifically stupid I was. Um, and, and stupidity actually is never general. Um, it always relates to our blind spot. It always relates to the thing that we're not willing to listen to. In this instance, my lack of willingness was to listen to the audience I was talking to, right? I was talking to two 19-year-olds who really liked air mattresses. Um, to me, the air mattress is what I have to sleep on when I visit my sister, uh, and the kids get the bed, and I have to be in the basement on the air mattress. It just, I wasn't the person that this particular opportunity was speaking to. I misunderstood the audience, and I also misunderstood sort of the excitement that my students had um, at that time about the idea. The other thing it's taught me, and now this is, we're going back nine or ten years ago, um, is, wow, they are, I'm teaching students who I really don't understand. 
um, that the technology that they use, the, uh, the way they think uh, is very different. And um, it's, it's always a constant, as I'm sure you can relate, it's a constant matter of playing catch up. Um, with where they're going and trying to understand what they want. Uh, in fact, the, I don't know if you know the Beloit, is it Beloit? Beloit College has the mindset uh, of every class. They had the mindset of the class of 2020, so they remind you of the things that your incoming students know that you don't know. Um, so they don't use email anymore because, in fact, email existed when they were born and they just think it was an old technology. Um, or another sad thing is actually they don't know a country that was never at war. Um, uh, they don't know uh, that eBay never existed. Uh, so we have a, a, a group of students who every year um, accelerate in a sort of a different world of knowledge and a different set of expectations as to how information is delivered and how they learn and, and what they expect. For me as a teacher, it's actually very, very frustrating because I never get responses from my emails. I practically beg uh, for responses from my emails. Um, the, other, the other lesson, the, the, you know, again, these two students coming in, and it's something that's always stuck with me, is I've always found that engaged students like that who come and reach out to me and try to talk to me are almost always the best students. And so it's taught me always, and one of the reasons I actually do tell the story, uh, is, is to get them engaged, to get them to know that, uh, uh, you know, that is the key to learning, that it's actually about them and I'm only here for them. Um, and leading me to really my last conclusion of that story, which is um, uh, professors are people. Um, it's a piece of advice I give to my own children who are going off to college. Um, I have three in college now. Uh, and it's, you know, they of course, when I say professors are people, they say duh. Um, but what I mean by that is um, we're terrifically, deeply, profoundly imperfect. Uh, and um, we only learn through an interaction with our students, um, and we only get better uh, through an interaction with our students. They're the ones who force us to learn, and in fact, they're the reason um, that we're here. I also tell them that because I think it's the key to student success, is the more we're open to them and the more we're willing to help them, I think the, the, the more they'll succeed. And I know, of course, you know that because that is at the heart of what CCRI does. Um, and so with that, I leave you uh, with the best of wishes for, the class, for your academic year, 2016-2017. Uh, um, I also, in early fall, I tell my students that they should take pictures of themselves because they look really tan and rested and they won't look this good in December. Um, so remember that and have a great year. Thank you. I'm trying to decide um, when at the next council meeting uh, I will try to insert the Airbnb. I'll just say the word um, with, with nothing else attached to it. Um, thank you, Bill. I'd now like to introduce our union leaders and invite our faculty association president, Steve Murray, to speak. My name is Steve Murray. This is my 24th year here at the college. Unlike Donald Trump, I'm going to stay on script. I, don't, I think I'll, not Jeff Heiser, and uh, I'm going to stick to my script. Um, as I said, it's my 24th year at the college, and just like all of you, I'm looking forward to another great year here at the college, working with our students. Um, I feel blessed to be here. I think uh, we've all won the lottery. Um, sometimes we may forget that uh, there's no better job than what we do. Um, we're all very fortunate to have this opportunity to fulfill our mission, uh, to educate the people of our great state, to help them fulfill their dreams. And uh, they all have different dreams, and we're so blessed to be able to help them with that. No one likes to see the summer winding down. We've got beautiful weather. Uh, but I can honestly say that I'm very much looking forward to getting back in the classroom back on a schedule, and as Megan kind of said earlier, feeling that, I don't know about you, that small knot I get in my stomach the first day of class. Even after 24 years, you don't know who's going to be in the classroom, how we're, they're going to interact, and uh, that little anxiety to get back in there. I feel a little bit of it right now, to be perfectly honest, but uh, it's great just to get back, to feel that, to feel alive. So many people have jobs where they don't necessarily feel alive, that they're actually making a contribution. And we, again, are so blessed to, to have that opportunity. So I appreciate it. I hope you do as well. I'm also looking very much forward as the uh, faculty union president to working with the administration, to working with Megan and the others on her team. Uh, we have a lot of great opportunities before us to move the college forward. And I know Megan, that's what she's really trying to do. And I think in her short tenure here so far, she's really tried very, very hard to do that. And she's made some great progress. And we know she'll continue to do that, as will we. Uh, since we were last together as a group in the spring, 
To no one's surprise, there's been a lot going on here at the college. We are moving forward, as I said. The faculty union is looking to engage the administration on a number of very important initiatives. Um, and again, they're all of equal value. Uh, most would agree our salary structure just needs to be worked on. And I'm, I'm glad Bill is here today. Uh, there's limited funding, obviously, but we're hoping, again, with him as a strong advocate for us, we can make some progress in getting our salaries up to a level that they really should be. Um, how we work here at the college. Uh, we know that over the years we've had a bit of a problem with shared governance, and I know that Megan is committed to improving that, as we all are as well. So hopefully people will be willing to step up and get involved in that, to not just talk about it, but to actually uh, play a role. Um, we have a new proposed master schedule. We're trying to work on that and make sure it's fair for everyone and that it uh, goes off well for all of us. Um, very importantly, there's also some new initiatives from the governor's office. Uh, the governor obviously wants to move us forward in many different ways, some of which we may agree with, some of which we may not. Uh, very importantly, uh, she has some new initiatives, which we've all seen in the news, PTEC, um, uh, concurrent enrollment, enhancing that. And we want to have a role in that. Well, we want to have our say, who's going to teach those courses, um, how that will be handled, how that will be rolled out. Uh, all of these initiatives have potential opportunities. We're trying to get them right. I'm dedicated to sharing these problems and working with the administration towards solutions that are fair and best for the college as a whole. After all, we are an institution of higher learning. We have immense talent in this room, and if we tap into that talent, we should be able to get these things right. Um, and again, hopefully, uh, again, we'll all have a great semester, a great year, and uh, I look forward to working with you. Thank you. So uh, at PDD Day, I remember very clearly, Steve was sitting over there, and I was sure he was sitting with Leslie, and I realized like 15 minutes in, of course, it was Leslie's sister. Um, I really enjoyed talking to both of you this morning. Uh, with that, Leslie, uh, please come up to speak on behalf of the Educational Support Professional Association. Good morning, CCRI! I really always wanted to do that. Um, the first day of school has always been one of my most favorite times of year. Even as a child, I really loved going back. Um, there's nothing like the excitement um, that the start of a new school year brings. That excitement still exists for me, maybe more so. As the parent of a teenager, I am so looking forward to the start of the school year. I've literally been singing, it's the most wonderful time of the year for about a week. My five-year-old said, Mom, it's Christmas. My son said, no, it's Mom trying to be funny. Seriously though, the start of the academic school year is special. The school comes alive again, the students are back, new and returning, and they are filled with excitement and hope. The faculty come back refreshed and happy. It's always funny because every start of the school year, one of my faculty members in the art department will say to me, did you have a nice summer? Did you relax? Um, no. I worked all summer, so. Um, with that being said, I would like to take a moment and mention all of the members of ESPA who spend their entire summer getting the college ready for this very week. To my colleagues in OES who have spent the summer enrolling our students, Thank you. To my colleagues in physical plan who have spent the summer getting the grounds ready in the interior of the building, all set, I thank you. To my colleagues, thank you. <laughs> to my colleagues in the IT department who have spent the summer updating our computer labs and classrooms so that they're all set when our faculty and students arrive, thank you. To my, thank you. To my colleagues in payroll who have spent the summer uploading our reports so that we all get paid on time. I mean, honestly, who doesn't like to get paid? Thank you. And to all the other departments that I don't have time to mention in three minutes, thank you. You are the infrastructure of this institution and the contributions and sacrifices that you willingly make every day matters. Not only to the school, but to every student that walks through our doors. What you do, what we do as members of ESPA affects the lives of every student here. As we begin another school year, I am hopeful. I've been called naive, but I am hopeful. I am hopeful that this new administration will lead CCRI in a direction that not only promotes the growth and success of our students, but that of its employees. 
I am hopeful that our members' achievements, talents, and contributions will be commended and recognized, and the college will support our people and promote from within the institution. I am hopeful that every employee of this college will be treated with respect and will always receive fair and equitable treatment. And lastly, I am hopeful that all five in-house unions truly understands that a house divided against itself cannot stand, but rather, when there is no enemy within, the enemies outside cannot hurt you. I welcome our newest members of the faculty, as I knock over Megan's water bottle, um, <laughs> association, and I wish all of you um, a successful, happy, healthy fall semester. Thank you. Maybe next year I'll do the thing Leslie did. I'm definitely not doing it this year. Um, <laughs> let us now please welcome Joel Gluck, Vice President of our Adjunct Faculty Association. Good morning. Uh, my name is Joel Gluck, and uh, just like everybody else here, I've been here quite a long time. Les I think, um, Leslie, you said people were here for a while. I have been here 14 years. I felt like a very little fish in a big pond when I first got here 14 years ago. Now I just feel like a little bigger fish. Um, I am the Vice President of the CCRI Part-Time Faculty Association, and on behalf of our President, Zdenko Juskov, and the over 500 adjunct faculty members that we represent, I welcome you to the Fall 2016 semester, which I have dubbed the Transition Semester. The definition of the term transition sums up what we will collectively be experiencing over the next year. Transition, as we know, is the process or period of change from one state or condition to another. Students will be transitioning to new courses. Faculty will be transitioning to new students. Our department chairs will be transitioning to a new system of assigning courses and new rules pertaining to part-time faculty. And our new president will be transitioning as she learns the ins and outs of this great institution. And when I say great institution, I can talk from a personal um, effect because my son goes here. He's starting his second year. And I wouldn't send him here if this wasn't a great institution. The one thing that each of these transitions have in common is that they will improve student learning and outcomes. The Part-Time Faculty Association took great pride in the fact that increasing successful student outcomes was the driving force in our work as we negotiated our new contract. As we begin the task of changing student lives, together we will make dreams come true. Remember, teachers make all other professions possible. Without teachers, our world would not have doctors and nurses and actors and social scientists and musicians and everything else that requires a level of higher level thinking. And let's face it, that's just about everything. So with that, I wish you all a rewarding semester, and I hope to meet each and every one of you throughout the semester. Thank you, Joel. And I would now like to welcome our own Bev Wiley of the college's Professional Staff Association. Thank you, President Hughes, and good morning and welcome back, everyone, to another great academic year. We entered this semester having been through a multiple, multitude of changes over the past few months, which I feel will help us reach that goal of being the best community college in New England by 2020. This will take a collective effort on all of our parts, and I'm sure there'll be a few bumps in the road along the way. But in the words of Socrates, the secret of change is to focus your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. The Professional Staff Association will be continuing its work, assisting our members with their concerns, and we're making progress in providing a more streamlined process for audits and upgrades, and a fact sheet for members to better understand their membership benefits. But we need to remember that our primary focus for being here is our students. And that should be our focus. And when the road gets tough, we need not to blame them, but try to envision the students they are becoming, not the students that they are at that moment. Look for help and support from your colleagues, as we have a collective responsibility to serve each other as well as the students. We must work to make a difference in the lives of every student we meet 
and know that not every student will succeed in the short time that we have them. Often the life lessons we teach are not realized until the students are ready to learn them, and most often it's years after they've left CCRI. In the words of John Ruskin, the highest reward for a person's toil is not what they get for it, but what they become by it. As we go through this upcoming year, remember to laugh often, cry if you must, stay motivated, make a positive difference, have a great year, and enjoy the ride. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bev, uh, and all the union leaders for being here today and, and for speaking with us. Uh, we have several student government leaders here with us this morning. Uh, their names are up on the screen. I am very pleased to introduce uh, our own Knight Campus President and members of his cabinet, Jesse Sullivan. <laughs> Chantel Pestagna, Flanagan Campus President and her cabinet. Oscar Rosa, Liston Campus President and his cabinet members. And finally, Mariella Lucage, Newport County Campus President and members of her cabinet. So Marielle, I know you know this, but this is the first year your campus has had an active student government uh, in several years. I know that Robin Green and others have been working to make that happen. Um, you and your colleagues right here uh, at all four of our campuses are so vital to creating our community, and we are so grateful. We thank you for your leadership and for your service. Next, I'd like to introduce the President and Vice President of our Student Veterans Organization, Joe Jackson and Lee Williams. Thank you for your service to our country and for the work you do supporting our student veterans on campus. I think everyone in this room knows um, that is a population that's gonna grow and it is a priority of this administration to make sure that our veterans are served and served well, so thank you. Uh, last, I'd like to introduce our student ambassadors. They are familiar to everyone in this room because we see them uh, all over our campuses. We saw them this morning, welcoming new students and visitors and making all who come believe that they are part of this community. We have five ambassadors with us here this morning. Their names are up on the screen. Thank you all for joining us today. So now let's look at what we've become since the last time we all came into this room last year. Let's look at the names of all of the new employees who have joined the college since this time last year. So we are so thrilled uh, you have chosen our college and we are excited for all that you will bring to our community. Thank you. So now, this always feels like the Oscars. I feel like Norm did such a good job with the video. Uh, we gotta figure out how we do that video um, of the actors. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Let's, let's thank our employees who have retired since this time last year. So uh, these outstanding members of our community have provided an outstanding uh, 753 combined years of service to our college. Uh, we are so grateful for their contributions uh, and we thank them. So I'm struck by, by that number, what we just saw, uh, 753 years of collective experience. And I look out at the room and I listen to those of you who have already spoken and I see hundreds and hundreds more years of collective experience just sitting in this room. And I stand in front of you with seven months under my belt. So in those seven months, I've met with so many of you and learned so much. And I've seen every day how fully you all take care of this college and the people within it. I love watching you teach our students. I've watched them in your classes, throwing pots on wheels, inventing new things in our advanced manufacturing lab, learning trigonometry on a whiteboard, and performing top-notch dental hygiene. I've listened to you as you've invited me into your classrooms, 
while you teach our students about human evolution and about microbiology. And I've listened to you as you've shared important victories. We have talked together about liberal arts offerings, musical and theatrical productions, foreign language trips and DECA trips, and our observatory. I, I have to tell you, is there anyone here who hasn't talked to Brendan about the observatory? Uh, last spring, I was honored to attend pinnings of our dental hygienists and our nurses, and of course, our college-wide graduation. And through it all, I saw how much pride you take in our students and how much of yourselves you invest in them. And I love watching you take care of our students. I've watched while our enrollment services and student services staffs work tirelessly to serve thousands of students to make sure they are ready to enter our classrooms in the fall. And over these last seven months, I also have learned from you about the very real challenges we face teaching our students, some of whom arrive unprepared to succeed in our classes. As educators, having students who aren't able to successfully perform in our classes can be discouraging to you and has devastating results for them. Last spring, we started talking in our open forums about persistence, completion, and transfer. Let's talk now about persistence. We know that between five and 6,000 students who started last fall aren't coming back this fall. And with completion, we know that roughly 90% of our students tell us at orientation, when they come through our doors for the first time, that they want to graduate in two or three years. And we know that only 14% will meet that goal. And finally, transfer. Despite the fact that we have transfer agreements on the books with URI and RIC, we know that some of our program-to-program -program transfer plans require our students to take 137 credits to get a bachelor's degree. That's extra time and it's extra money, even for those students who have done everything right. And all of these challenges relating to persistence, to completion, and to transfer are happening despite the fact that our students have all of you in their corner, have all of you working hard to support them. And just as we recognize significant challenges with student success, we also face very real budgetary constraints. As you know, this year, 54% of our funding comes from tuition revenue, and that's a rate set by the Rhode Island Board of Education while the remaining 46% of our funding comes from the state. This year our budget is $107 million, and we submitted a request for an additional 3.8 to meet the cost of operating this college. In the end, our tuition was frozen, and we received a 970,000 increase out of that 3.8 we requested in new state funding. So there it is in a nutshell. We are being asked to do more with less, to teach students who require more resources than ever before with less financial support from the state than ever before. In addition to frozen tuition and declining state support, our declining enrollment also impacts our financial outlook. What I'd like to share here is simply what we all know. We care about fewer students coming and staying at the college because we know that our mission is to serve all Rhode Islanders who want a college education. And we also need to care because the economic impact to our college of declining enrollment is real. Every decrease in enrollment of 1,000 full-time students is $4.5 million in lost tuition. As you heard on the video uh, with Rob, Vice President Enright, Ron Schertz, and her team are focusing significant attention on enrollment strategy. And over the summer, they launched a bunch of ideas, like mobile outreach, setting up in Kennedy Plaza and at the malls, devising new ways to communicate with students through texts, and ultimately just taking enrollment on as a critical topic. Look to hear more from Sarah and her team on this subject, and she regrets that she can't be here today to offer some early insights. So what should we do? How will we continue to take on the challenge of preparing our students for a successful transition to a four-year college and to quality employment? I'm here this morning to ask for your help 
in designing this way forward. I know that we will need to continually adapt and improve what we are trying to accomplish together. Like when you design a syllabus at the beginning of every semester and know as you work your way through the course that you're going to do some things differently the next time. I know we still have much to design together and these early plans are just the beginning. We will redesign as we learn together. And as Bev said, there are definitely going to be bumps in the road and some of them are going to be frustrating. I'm going to need your help in improving what we try. Over the last seven months, I have been so inspired by the close partnerships that have successfully advanced so much good work that preceded my arrival here. So much good work has resulted from these collaborations, like multiple measures, early alerts, new math options, a reverse transfer policy, strengthening educational partnerships, and I'm confident we can keep going. I've asked Dr. Costigan to talk more about some of these successful collaborations in a few minutes. And I am really so very grateful for all of you in this room who have been so instrumental in this work. So where do we go from here? My top priority is to listen with an open mind, to learn from you, and to ask together, how do we imagine this college in 2020? I want to have multiple ways to learn from you, and with this in mind, here's what we will do. I'm going to have regular office hours. This information is up on my homepage, on our website, and as you all know, I hope by now, Deb Zielinski can always help you find me. I want to continue to attend department meetings, just as I did last spring, because I learned so much from those conversations. And we will continue to host open forums across all four campuses. I came to this college because I believe that our students are capable of succeeding and completing their degree and then going on to successfully earn a bachelor's degree. I believe this because I have seen firsthand the strong teaching, strong advising, and strong support you all give to our students every day. This college has a 50-year history of serving anyone who enters our doors. That's a proud history, and it's one I'm proud to join. My eye always will be on building a path with you to graduation. This path is anchored by a strong curriculum, excellent instruction, and outstanding student services. And it must lead to a successful four-year degree and quality employment in high demand fields for our graduates. So our college, it's a bridge, right? It's a bridge. It stretches from our high schools, and it extends onward to that four-year degree and quality jobs. And what I'm asking you today is three things. First, continue to teach me what I need to learn. Second, try some new ideas about how we are going to serve our students. Some of these ideas are already right here in this room, and they came from you. And some of these ideas we will borrow and adapt from other community colleges. And the third thing I'm asking you to do is to keep coming back to the table with your experience and your ideas about how we can improve our practice together. I am asking you to believe that we can do this together and that we can support our students in achieving their goals. So, how are we gonna get there? Are we going to see ourselves as the best community college in New England by 2020? And how will we define best? After seven months, I have some ideas and I need yours. We know we must focus our efforts on increasing student persistence, completion, and transfer, and we know that the bedrock of all three must always be strong learning. We are going to embark on a strategic plan this fall. It is my belief that the conversations we have together during the planning process will lead us to a shared understanding of what best means. Here's what we know already. It's about our students, our programs, our outcomes, and it's also about ourselves, our faculty, and our staff. And we are already doing good work. Many of you in this room have dedicated your lives to this college and to our students. We need to listen closely to each other and learn from one another. Here's what I know. Anything we decide to do must always begin with learning. Let's focus here first. If we get this right, the next part will follow. So what can success look like? You will tell me what you see. Here's what I see. 
I see our students graduating in greater numbers and finding good jobs, jobs that pay well, that are just the first step along a path of ongoing learning and advancement. I see our students transferring to four-year schools, especially to URI and RIC, easily and at an affordable price. I see our students graduating from those four-year schools and getting even better jobs and continuing to learn and to grow. That's what I see. And I see all of you feeling inspired by our students and by each other and being recognized for what you are, educators and staff who are doing the most difficult and most important work in higher education in this state. And here's what I'm going to do. I will learn actively from all of you. I will work with the post-secondary council and the state's general assembly to deepen their understanding of the unique challenges community colleges face and to engage their support to invest in our faculty and in our students. And I will work with URI and RIC to build a strong transfer partnership with them. We must get statewide buy-in that this is the path our students must have created for them. And finally, I will work to bring more employer partners to the table in order to create more opportunity for our students once they graduate from CCRI. So that's what I'm going to do. And I know that together we can do anything we put our minds to. So thank you. Thank you for your passion for this college. Thank you for teaching and for serving. And thank you for giving yourselves to this work. I'm excited about where we are headed. And I look forward to going there together. As I attended those department meetings last spring and talked with so many of you in the halls and after hours and before hours, um, one of the concerns that was brought to me uh, by faculty was this sense of um, if we are getting uh, pressure to increase our graduation rates, um, there's, a, there, there's an anxiety there that we will have to lower our standards. And um, I heard that concern, and what I want everyone in this room to really understand uh, is that we will never lower our standards in order to increase our graduation rate. And the remarks I made about learning, that it all, if we just start with that focus on learning, I truly know the rest will follow. Um, it was an important message that I, that I did want you all to hear today, um, and I, I really do ask uh, very sincerely, keep, keep talking to me about what you're thinking and what your ideas are.